as a conceptual designer, do you have to be a little bit thick skin and, and, and handle rejection? Oh yeah, I mean that's that's actually that's a good point. Yeah. In our school and also the school I went to, that is also the other part. Time management is one. Learning to be professional is the other, which is when you're working using someone else's money to design, they have every right to reject your design. But I find a lot of younger artists have trouble dealing with that. They take it very personal. They go to the forum and just go, "Hey, I think your thing is too big, or that that thing's not that good." Just wash a number of flames, and then that like, happened, right? So immature. Professionals, we don't care. I mean, that director says, "Hey, I don't like it. That's cool. That's that's their decision, right?" And now I go back and do the same thing and hope that I do it better, and never like. Give them attitude, right? You don't want, to, okay, you don't like it. I'm gonna do the worst job ever. Yeah. That is just super amateur. What we do is like, I mean, on Star Wars, I have tons, dozens of drawings rejected by George, right? It doesn't phase me or anything. It's like, okay, that's cool, right? And oftentimes when they reject it, uh, they always say, hey, look, this is great stuff, but not for this film, but it's great, yeah. right? Because they realize it's good art, it's good design, but it doesn't feel they're trying to tell. So we have no problem having our designs change because at the end of the day, we're trying to do a common product here, right? You don't want to be like some prima donna or something like that, go, my design has to stay this way. It's, if it changes and make the product good, that's fine. Yeah, a, a picture paints a thousand words, but do you ever find yourself need to explain some of your designs sometimes? Um, well, that's an interesting question because in the true sense of design, hand-waving shouldn't even come into the meaning. Design should sell itself because on the film you can hit pause and suddenly like this guy comes in. Okay, yeah, in this, yeah. yeah. I did this in this case, I worked. You know, we didn't. Yeah. You can't. The visuals. That's why spaceships and things like that look the way they do in films. They have a front and a back. Yeah. You know, in most films, that way the general audience knows how it works. Even yeah. though in space, anything could be the front or the back, right? But how, they always look like jets. That's one of the main reasons. Actually. Is it a rewarding job? Oh, definitely. There's been a few times where I'm sitting in my office in my studio drawing. I think I cannot believe I make a living doing this. Really, it's really weird. You're, you're sitting Except there. The back, yeah. Well, not really that, but just <laughs> just relax, right? You're, there's no dress code in our industry. I mean, look at the way I dress. Right? I run a school like this because there's no. You don't have to report to anybody. You know, the highest level of guys you work with are all artists themselves or designers. So it's a very relaxed environment, and you can even pay to draw. And the few times that happens, always something really cool that I'll draw anyways. You know, one I think it was a video game where I'm working on aliens, and then the clients like draw me lots and lots of cool aliens. I'm like, I can't be someone's pain, you know? Drawing some huge teeth and you know, disgusting all that. It's like the pain, you know? Like, what a fun job. Any drawbacks? Any negativity? Uh, hard work. I think it makes you into workaholics because as designers, you always want to do new projects. You always take on new projects. And in a sense, I mean, typically in Los Angeles, I was working usually about two to three, sometimes four jobs at once because we're freelance artists. We could take on many. And each one, each one is hard. You know, when I was doing Transformers, I think I was doing Disney at the same time and some uh, EA games at the same time. So I got three big clients we're trying to deal with, and so you tend not to uh, rest that well. You know, I, I get about five, six hours. I still do these days because you just discipline to that. Bro, can you give us some advice to all these new uh, upcoming conceptual designers or people who want to be a conceptual designer? Okay, sure. Uh, I think the biggest one: there are no secrets in the industry. You know, I get a lot of email in my inbox, tons. Asking what brush do you use, or what software do you use, or what do you do? A lot of that equals to I want to know some kind of secret button I could press to become a professional, but there isn't any. It's just hard work. So whenever I get questions like what kind of pen do you use, what kind of brand of paper, like they really want to know what brand, right? I'm like, dude, copy paper from the copy machines. Any pen you find on the desk is all you need, right? Software, anything that makes you work, it doesn't matter. Um, that's the thing. There's no some kind of secret thing because people really think that you know just because it's art, somehow there's a technique or there's a special way to do this. There, there really actually isn't. It's just like becoming a doctor. There is no secret. You have to do the hard work. So that's the best advice. And then two is dedication. To to become a professional, you have to work a lot of hours, like long weeks, no sleep. You know, especially in the beginning of the career. If you just want to have fun and goof off with your friends and stuff, then it's very hard to succeed. Just like in any industry, you can. Cool. Thank you so much for joining. Cool. Thank you, man. All right.